Well, um, so we we'll wrap up on the Wisconsin game. I was disappointed in maybe the factors that, that hurt us most, and that was uh, rebounding the ball and getting loose balls. I, I thought they got more of them. Uh, they get out rebounded by 14, 10, 12. Um, that's not good. I thought our guard play offensively. AJ played well. I thought defensively um, or offensively they took Tyson out of the game a little bit and we took him out of the game. But I thought defensively our guard play is just not good enough. We have to get better in that area. We have to rebound better from our guards. Um, it's pretty simple and basic. Marty's actually done a hell of a job rebounding the ball. And it hurt to have Malik in foul trouble, and that was uh, part of our demise. But uh, Wisconsin is a very good team that played very well at home, and, uh, and that's the uh, negative of of the situation, that uh, we didn't play our best, and we played against a very good team. In Michigan, um, I don't think their record is really indicative of them. It's been a strange year for them with Jawan being out. Uh, part of the year, um, I think uh, they've also had a, you know, the situation with their point guard that uh, you don't get to see every day and not knowing all the circumstances. I just give them credit for whatever way they felt they should handle it. But through all that, every game they've been in, just about right to the wire. They played a lot of three, four, five point games to the last minute of the game. Uh, so I don't think their record is indicated what the talent they have. And Kamwa is a, you know, we couldn't guard him at Tennessee when we played him two years ago. He had 20 in that game. Uh, it was an exhibition game, but it was a real game. Um, he's a very good player. Reed is, uh, I think, as big a guy as we have in this league. He's got size, but he's got athletic ability. He's got strength. Um, can do a lot of things. And Williams has been there forever. Uh, great three-point shooter that uh, I think um, has hurt us in the past. He hurt us last year down there. Uh, you know, the issue is with their point guard and who will play, but the kid that's playing was supposed to be a starter last year, blew his knee, and now he's coming back off that injury. So I think they're a dangerous three-point shooting team as they've uh, shot almost nine threes a game or made almost nine threes a game as one of the top in the Big Ten. And yet I think their strength is their size inside and what they do with uh, Kumwa and of course Reed. Uh, Teixeira is a guy that comes off the bench that can go inside or outside, but he too has made a lot of threes. So yeah, it'll be about them, but it's gonna be about us too and how we play. And. Uh, I think defensively we've got to uh, ratchet it up on another notch, and I think rebounding we've got to ratchet it up two notches. Questions? Hey Tom, uh, there was a uh, photo on social media. It looks like you and Juan on a recruiting trail together, but in the gym, back to the wall, just kind of talking. What's the difference between preparing to go against your in-state rival? and having that time in the gym with him as his two coaches on the recruiting trail? Well, we were in a gym together, and it was right after, you know, he still wasn't 100% uh, back. And uh, rivalries aside, um, when things are life and death or when things are, uh, you know, I mean, I did call him early in the year. I mean, uh, you know, Phil Martelli understaff is a very, very good friend of mine, and he took over. But... Uh, you know, I think we all are human, and uh, I always say that rivalry is a rivalry, and it should be a rivalry, but when people's lives are kind of in question, at least uh, serious enough where you're out that length of time, um, we talk more about that and more about the state of college basketball than we get about our teams, to be honest with you. Yeah. Thank you. When it comes to, you know, going after loose balls and rebounding, a lot of that is just effort, and you mentioned effort-related issues after the last game. Um, defense, again, is another one that nobody wants to do, but you have to put effort into doing it. Why do you think with this team being so seasoned and having so many older guys that it's just been hard for them to apply themselves in those areas? 
Well, at times, and we've been very good defensively, and uh, I, I'd say that your question is right on as far as consistency. I don't think we've been consistent uh, enough on it, and it always has to fall on the coach. And I, I say that, uh, you know, we've, uh, we get limited at times with the four spot especially. Um, but I, I really think AJ is a guy now that has improved his offense tremendously, and yet uh, his, his success, I think, now and later on would be in his ability to defend and pass the ball and handle the ball. You know, a year ago we were complaining all the time, never about rebounding, we were complaining about turnovers. And now we're one of the better turnover teams in our league as far as numbers. But uh, I think sometimes when you, you know, you worry about your offense, it affects your defense. It shouldn't for AJ, because he's a very, very, very good defender when he wants to be. I think Tyson's one of the best defenders, and I think Jaden could be. I thought this would be one of my better defensive perimeter teams. And uh, they've been good at times. In fact, they've been real good in some games if you look at the games. I just think that uh, everybody wonders about our inside game, our perimeter game. You have to be able to do more than just score it. you got to be able to defend it. you got to be able to rebound it. you got to be able to get the loose balls. That's the job of of the guard play, and I don't think we've done as good a job of that. And that was the challenge we put to our guys this week. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see a response. Tom um, Jackson played, I think, 14 minutes against this match. Mm -hmm. He's trying to kind of get there physically, and yeah, like, what role do you see for him going forward? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think when you lose a game, you're always looking. I'm looking for my, um, my starters to play a little better. I'm looking for... Uh, you know, can we get a little more scoring in there? Um, Jackson will bring that. I'm, I'm, I'm been pleased with the progress Booker's made. I, I think he's practiced better in the last three weeks and still has things he's got to improve on. But uh, Jackson Kohler is a, a definitely a guy that can score it. He's not back as far as when you watch him move. He's physically strong enough to do some things not moving as good yet and uh, so you know I I think the positive is Marty has done up until that last game and even then he got seven rebounds but he's been pretty much for the minutes he plays he's probably averaging more rebounds and block shots than anybody we play per minute and uh, we're just looking for more because we're not getting enough from somebody else but I uh, I think the, the other positive for us has been Malik, <clears throat> other than the Northwestern game, has probably had eight, nine, ten games in a row where he's been pretty sufficient and, and maybe even very good. And the only thing that's really hurt him has been foul trouble in two games. And So we've got enough depth to play people, but uh, we need a Malik Hall in there. We're going to get Jackson more and more time. Uh, I think we're going to try to get Booker a little more time, but at the same time, um, you know, we're putting a little pressure on our guards. Our guards got to play better at both ends. Tom, the, the Michigan team is still trying to you know, figure out what it's going to do without McDaniel. Um, you know, obviously not a lot of confidence. Are these the sort of games where you really want to put your foot on somebody early and make sure they don't find whatever they're missing? Well, for sure, you know, but I think I want to do that in a lot of games. But, but you know, the point guard they got coming in is uh, well has done a he's done a good job. I mean, he's he's uh, he's taken a lot of shots. I mean, they give him more shots. He's he's hit more threes. Um, they've been more consistent from the three. Um, so you know, can we pressure him a little more? Um, wear him down, get a running game going a little more. I, I think there's no question that would be in the game plan, and that's what we hope to do. But, uh, you know, I mean, he was a damn good player last year coming in. I mean, really good player. The knee injury hurt him, or he would have probably started last year. And uh, he is coming back on his own now. Uh, the knee is, looks better and better every game I see him in. I don't know, I'm not there on a daily basis, but yeah, I think any time you, uh, number one, the rivalry game, but number two, uh, 
a team that is trying to find themselves. The, the negative for our fans and media and everybody else is to go check their scores and look at the end of games. I mean, they've been in every game. And uh, so we've got to make sure that uh, we just take care of our business, not worry about what issues they have and problems. It's might have been a tough situation to have your coach out for a third of the year and then have this situation where your point guard was playing home and not away. That continues. I mean, that's an issue too um, that I don't wish on anybody, to be very honest with you. I'm wondering a little bit about uh, Jaden in particular. Uh, you're talking about guys that you want to get consistency from, uh, particularly in the glass. How much can more can he provide for when you talk about the team being a little undersized? And, you know, the, the 11 rebound game to start the year. What, what, what does he need to do with that piece? Well, I think it's consistently go every time, you know. I mean, we're getting a lot of guys leaking out. Um, he's been one of them, you know, trying to leak out on our fast break. And and uh, we can run by rebounding, you know. We've proven that over years, years and years of it. Your wings are rebounding, and you still can get down the floor. So I think that's one thing for Jamie. He's a great athlete. Um, you know, he hasn't shot the ball as well lately, and sometimes the, your offense affects your defense. But, um, you know, he's not 6'7 or 6'8 either, where he's going to be able to just go in there and out-rebound. A lot of the rebounds we're not getting are loose ball rebounds, and uh, that's where guards got to gobble them up. But you got to be in there to gobble them up. And uh, I think we've leaked out too much, and I think that falls on me and my staff as much as it does the players. So we're trying to correct it. And that'll be critical moving forward, I think, for us. Is that tough when you know you do want to run at the same point? Like, it's not tough to me because the system wasn't two guys rebound and three guys run. The system was five guys rebound, and then we still run. And uh, and I think um, that's why some teams have we haven't gotten killed on the offensive glass. I mean, it's not like some team got 15 offensive rebounds. You know, 9, 10, 11 is pretty normal. I, I, I don't know, I think Wisconsin got 11. But, um, so it's not always that. It's it's the loose balls that I don't know if are even counting as rebounds. But it seems like we're not coming up with enough of those. And I, I'm putting that on our guards. I really am. I think they're the ones that got to get that. <clears throat> Sorry. So I want to address the elephant in the room. There's a cloud over the city of Detroit right now. Uh, you talked about Dan Campbell, your appreciation for him. Any encouraging words you have for him as a coach or the Lions or the fan base right now? I did watch, you know, most of that game last night. And uh, it's just, you know, your guy's job is to analyze. And the talking head's job is to analyze. And, and I'm listening right away to comments about going for it, you know, we dropped two passes that one of them was on a fourth down that would have would have probably been canonizing him and putting a crown on his head if we would have caught the one, because I think that would either led to a touchdown or an easy field goal. And uh, and it started the, you know, the whole, but going for it on fourth down, um, it was no surprise to the announcers. It was no surprise to me, because I followed them. Um, I just, I just get a kick out of people think you can play one way one time and another way another time. And he probably went for those five, six, seven times, different games at the beginning of the year and won a lot of them. And that's why he got a rep for doing it. But if he didn't win those games, he wouldn't have been playing in the last night's game. And that's what's hard. You know, I understand it's hard from people outside looking in standpoint, you know, like kick the field goal, get the points, you know. Um, I've heard people argue over the analytics. I laughed about that because uh, I heard some guys today say, well, uh, the analytics don't tell you everything, you know. Well, geez, I said that, got killed for it, you know. So um, I just love the fact that I think in every job, you know, a lot of guys can do my job and a lot of guys can do football's job, and a lot of guys can do jobs around the country, but there are perfect fits in some jobs for perfect guys. You know, you followed Steve Kerr. I mean, I 
for me, Steve Kerr was a great fit for that type of team that was, and I always said that, you know. To me, um, Dan Campbell is a great fit for the city of Detroit. You know, the blue collar city, the working on the lines, I saw where they postponed an hour or something of the production line. I, I didn't catch all of it. I said, it's perfect, you know, it's just, it's just, it's who we are, what we are, it's the culture you want to be in, and um, I'll, uh, I'll take that loss for having the courage to go for things and, and making your team believe in that. And he's done that day after day after day after day. Now you're going to get to the biggest game and say, uh, I don't think you guys are good enough now. You know, I, I heard some of this pregame about, you know, you've earned the right to be here. And that is something that I went through early in my career. You know, do you believe you can win in the big games? Um, and uh, you can't put yourself in there and then change your philosophy. I mean, you know, we're all going to question some things. But if we make some catches, I think um, we're canonizing them today for all those tough decisions that he made. And I'm canonizing him anyway because I just believe that he did what he's done all year and we won games that maybe we would have lost if he didn't do it. That's the philosophy. That's what he lives by. And uh, and I do think he's... I know I'm proud to have him as our head coach of you know one of the most important things in our state sports-wise, and that's the... Detroit Lions, and, uh, and I think we're we're going to be building to some really good things down the road. Thank you, uh, Tom. In the you started, you mentioned it's going to be more about us. I'm just wondering, you know, there's never any diminishing the rivalry, the emotional element, but for these two teams at this stage of the season, do you get the sense that it's more just sort of about basketball for this game in terms of both teams trying to get something going? Well, let's face it. I mean. Um, We've both been involved in championship runs at this time of year um, or later in the last 10 years, it seems like. And uh, right now we're both struggling a little bit. So is it just about basketball? I think the whole world has changed, you know? I don't know, I mean, everything seems to be about yourself now, you know? But I still think the rivalry is important. I, I think everything gets diminished some as you're seeing all these new additions to conferences and different things that are going on. But as long as I'm alive, the rivalry will always be the rivalry. I'm sure in Juwan's case or John B. Lines before him, it will be, at least in our era. What happens beyond that, I don't know. But right now, I think both teams are looking for their team to play a little bit more consistent for 40 minutes, not for 30, not for 35, not for 20, but for 40 minutes. And uh, I know that's what we're looking for. And if we can get that, I mean, we've had some great outings lately, uh, you know. I mean, we've had some great halves. We we just haven't had, I think, many great full games. And that's what you need to do to win, especially to win on the road. Anything else? Wow. That's, I guess that's the good news. Um, enjoy the day and uh, hopefully it'll be a great game tomorrow. <laughs>